I'm Donna, I'm 16, and on the 15th of February 2012, I was diagnosed with cancer for the second time in my life. This is the story of a young man from Ireland called Donal Walsh. Donal liked to pray the Rosary and the Divine Mercy and the Jesus, Mary and Joseph prayer. They were his prayers. And so I said, look, I'll say, we'll say the Rosary, Donal. And while he couldn't say it, he was aware of it and he, was, he, he would nod to say that he knew what he was going on. From the ages of 12 to 16, Donal battled with cancer, eventually losing the battle on Sunday the 12th of May, 2013. After about two minutes, after taking the communion, I noticed he slipped a bit. And I called for Jimma and Finbar to come up. Up the stairs, into the room, and Donal took three breaths. Ah. I just kissed him his last breath, and that was it, he was gone. And you knew this was, he was passing away? He was going, yeah. Yeah. yeah just, just, it was just minutes uh, after the prayer. What's that moment like? Awful. Awful. I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But a few weeks before he died, Donal had done something remarkable. My first guest tonight is 16 years old and he doesn't expect to live much longer. He wanted to be here tonight because he has something very important to say about the value of life. That made the entire country of Ireland stop in its tracks. God has given me this challenge, like, but I, he's, I may be used as a symbol for other people to appreciate life more. This is the story of Donald Walsh and his legacy. Today at the Shrine of Knock in Ireland, over 2,000 school students have gathered from across the country. Inside the magnificent Marian Basilica, Donald's mother, Elma Walsh, welcomes the crowd. It is wonderful that you're here, and you're here for a reason. Each and every single one of you here today are here for a reason. And that reason is to take something from today. The students then listen carefully to a number of speakers talking about different issues that affect the world today, in particular, mental health. One of the key speakers is Irish football star Aidan O'Mahony. Aidan O'Mahony went into his five-year-old self, kept everything to myself because I kind of saw myself that when I played with Kerry, you know, I played in the edge or I played in the line, I need to be seen as that person, I couldn't drop my guard. And as Don said there, ask for help or share that pain you're going through. The young people are encouraged to always speak openly about their mental health and, if ever suffering, to talk to someone about it and get help. This is part of the legacy of 16-year-old Donald Walsh, who even though he passed away from cancer, his dying message was powerful. Finbar and Elma are his parents. Elma, remind us, who was? Donald Walsh. Donald Walsh was our son. Um, he was an ordinary young fella, cheeky. He loved life, he loved football, he loved rugby, he loved sport. He was like any young teenager. Unfortunately, when he was 12, he got cancer. He did well for two years, then he got cancer back again when he was 15 in the lung. And again, he fought it. He got multiple tumours and he was diagnosed terminal. For a child to lose their parents is a horrific and difficult thing. But for parents to lose their child, it, it goes against the natural order of things. What was it like for both of you when you originally found out that he had cancer and then knowing that it, there was nothing that they could do? When we were told he was terminal, we turned around and sort of said, why us? And he, he changed his uh, story, his question to why not me? Donald was very upset for the first few days, but it only lasted a few days. And he decided he wasn't going to let cancer dictate whatever was left of his life, that he wanted to do something. As Donald battled multiple tumours with his future hanging in the balance, unrelated, a number of young people in the area took their own lives. And this had a profound effect on Donald, who was fighting to live. There was people in County Kerry that were young people that were taking their lives and he thought that maybe if they got a little help that maybe they might be around today when he wasn't going to get the chance. And here he was and he'd give anything for an extra day if he had it but 
he was sentenced to die at 16. He didn't have a choice. Would you please give a big welcome to Donal Walsh. With only a few weeks left to live, Donal, at only 16 years of age, went on national TV to share his story, to try and emphasise the value of life. It hurts me to see them think about it, to see it among their friends. But it kills me because I'm here fighting for my life for the third time. I've no say in anything. And I'm still here waking up every day. And then they think that they have a problem and this might be a solution. These people have to realise that there is help everywhere. That this is never going to be an answer. Like, I just see maybe if I meant to be a symbol for people to appreciate life, it mightn't be just suicide in particular, but just to appreciate life more in general, then I'd be happy to die if that's what I'm dying for, but... Okay. <laughs> Donald passed away four weeks later. He spoke on TV for all of 19 minutes, but his message had a profound effect on people. He had great faith. He had, um, you know, the three things he asked me to do when he died. One was to receive Holy Communion every day. The second was that he died with a clean spirit. And the third was that he'd get out of bed every day and do something, go somewhere and be active. Where do you think that came from, his deep faith? He had a remarkable faith. Um, it was kind of innate to him. He, he ju it was just in him. And a lot of people ask me that question. It's hard to explain. But it was just in him. It was just part of Donald. After his death, his parents started the Donal Walsh Live Life Foundation, which to date has raised over half a million euro for various charities, all promoting life. And once a year, students meet here at the Basilica of Knockin County Mayo to celebrate Mass, be inspired and encouraged by guest speakers, and be reminded of the value of life. What do you want your son's legacy to be? What do you want the two and a half thousand young people to leave here today with? To know that they're loved, to know that their lives are precious and delicate, and nobody knows what tomorrow will bring, but just to appreciate things that they have in life. Footballer Aidan O'Mahony, sharing his experience of suffering with his mental health, says he is encouraged by what Donal did those 10 years ago. Look, it's a beautiful location and it's very spiritual as well. And I'm always saying these days um, they're therapeutic and they're healing. And if one person goes away from today and uh, getting something from this, then that's uh, more important than anything else. And for the students, well, they can relate to Donal, a teenager their own age, who displayed such strength and courage. I think a lot of people um, would be very kind of afraid of the idea of terminal illness, but his bravery, and he was able to kind of um, endure through so much hardship and still have faith, and that's inspiring to people. I think that it is very inspirational. He really, he creates this beacon of hope for the youth. This keeps his hope alive. You know, Donald was only 16. Wow, he's a 16 year old but with some effect. If you, if you can speak out and you have a positive, you know, uh, uh, message. You can make a change. You can make a change, yeah. You can make you a can difference. Affect you can make a change world, in 19 minutes, you know, yeah. <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm meant to be a symbol for people to appreciate life, then I'd be happy to die if that's what 
I'm dying for. I'll be happy, you know.